Hey guys, it's Liv here, and in today's video, we're going to be ranking every Psychic type in competitive Pokemon. If you guys enjoy this type of content and you want to see more like it, leave a like on the video and subscribe. It goes a long way, obviously, with making sure that we can get as high as possible before Scar and Scarlet and Violet to make sure we're prepared for the new generation to introduce a ton of new people to competitive. So your subscription goes a long way and comment what tier lists you want to see next. I will say that I next week's tier lists are actually going to be instead of types, we're doing a part one and two of abilities on Monday and Friday because abilities are going to be so long to do. I nearly considered breaking this one into two parts because of how many psychic types there are, but a lot of them are fairly repetitive, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, but with that said, let's get into how we're doing the tier list. For anyone who's new to these, uh, it's pretty simple. The S plus are for Pokemon that either are top of the metagame and stuff like VGC, anything goes, or not Dex, anything goes, or Sword and Shield Ubers. Basically any format that would be allowing the, the cream of the crop, if it's a top-ish Pokemon in that, we're gonna mention it. This would be Pokemon such as Primal Groudon and not Dex, anything goes, or Pokemon such as maybe Incineroar or Kyogre in VGC Series 12, for example. Uh, for the S tier, it's for Pokemon that are still really good in VGC or they're still really good in Ubers or anything goes, but they're not going to be defining the metagame. This would be Pokemon like your ho in Ubers or maybe it's something like, for example, uh, Amoongus in VGC. This was something actually that someone in the comments pointed out to me, and I did oversight it for sure. Uh, Amoongus definitely is amazing this gen in VGC, um, but shout out to the commenter who pointed that out in the grass tier list. Uh, for the A tier, it's for Pokemon though. Oh, well, S tier might also include some really top tier OU Pokemon, however, for Psychic, I don't think we have it well we have one actually uh but i'll get into that uh basically pokemon that like absolutely run the ou metagame uh this would be pokemon like your lander Styrians, or your heatrans um this could include bds pou which will actually spoilers uh be influencing one of our picks today uh but i'll get into that in when we do get to that i guess um as far as the a tier goes these are for really good pokemon in the ou tier or for really bad pokemon in the ubers that are banned for some bullshit reason to ubers uh this would also be some more niche pseudo use pokemon in vgc b tier is for extremely niche pokemon in vgc uu ou fringe pokemon uh sometimes some really top tier ru pokemon make it in this portion uh the c tiers for pokemon that are like uu ru range like most likely hovering towards the ru side though maybe a band from nu pokemon d tier is nu slash pu and f tiers for pokemon that are fully evolved and really terrible or for nfes that are noteworthy enough to mention because they're not worse than our fully evolved mods uh but with that said let's go through this so I do want to start off by putting Alolan Raichu in the D tier. Uh, actually, I'm going to put Alolan Raichu in C tier. This is a kind of an interesting one. Uh, it's a really good surge sweep, uh, surge surfer sweeper, and especially as far as Nat Dex anything goes, even this weirdly enough has some teams where it pairs Coco both in Gen 7 and 8, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's still not a bad Pokemon in singles, but it's definitely not great. Uh, you basically need to run Electric Spam, which has its perks because there's not a lot of good ground types when you get into the really low tiers and you could pair it with a water or grass which are fairly mandatory on most teams anyway uh so it's a decent c albeit it's probably gonna be a lower on the list for c's but it's not bad electric psychic is really good offensive typing and yeah that's pretty much it uh cadabra it's an f tier but it's better than a lot of the other f tiers it's just pseudo zam which zam on the other hand uh is a pretty interesting one now i will say that i did mention and i kind of forgot it would be this early on uh, but I was going to be mentioning a Pokemon for BDSP. Now, I will say, to be fair, the meta's actually changed a lot looking at the VRs. Uh, specifically, I'm going off of VRs just to see what Pokemon are, would actually be checking Zam on this. But no longer having to deal with Lotties on a team is actually pretty... Well, specifically Latios on a team is pretty big. Same as Gengar. Uh, so the Zam checks actually are no longer as pressed, especially with Zam Gengar teams. Um, so I'm actually going to put Zam in A. Uh, this is still one of the better Pokemon of BDSP, and in my opinion... Uh, and this might be a bit of a juiced opinion, but I think that Zam is still probably one of the best Pokemon in BDSP, despite it not being an S rank. I actually think that I'm very shocked it's not an S rank, because Life Orb Zam has practically no switch-ins. Uh, Scizor is a really good one, to be fair. And again, not needing to deal with Latios or especially Gengar uh, is pretty big. Uh, but to be fair, Tyranitar also can obviously better check stuff like Gengar. Uh, no Pursuit helps this Mon a ton as far as VGC standard goes. It's an amazing offensive psychic. Uh, not, uh, VGC, BDSP. Um, it's amazing offensive psychic though it's a really deadly pokemon for most teams uh but to be fair it seems like weavile is like the best pokemon currently as far as bdsp goes uh so i can't really actually justify giving it the s rank anymore especially when there's also a lot of other psychic switch-ins at least at this point uh whereas previously zam would have been a pokemon that was a lot harder to switch in for top tier threats i think the meta though especially after a gengar ban has helped a little bit with that latios a little bit too but teams weren't 
really running Psy Spam to that degree. Uh, though, I won't act like I haven't done it at a couple points with Zam, because it's just that fucking good. Uh, Mega Zam, though, is a definite S tier. This is actually a really strong one. Um, I know a lot of people, when they think of Uber Psychic Megas, they think of Mega Mewtwo's because they're just better. But Mega Zam still is pretty incredible. 150 speed, incredible special attack, Magic Guard pre-Mega. It's definitely really solid, uh, really scary Mega with plot this gen. Sadly, though, it's just outclassed by Mega Mewtwo Y, um, which I guess while I'm talking about it, I'll skip to Mewtwo Y. It's just going to be above this, and regular Mewtwo will just be right above that. I'll save Mega Mewtwo X for when we actually get to it, but again, we're on the similar psychic types. These all basically function the same as far as anything goes, or as far as Ubers goes. Uh, the difference being, though, is that Mega Mewtwo Y is slightly stronger of a breaker than Mewtwo, and the, the 10 base speed, while it... It doesn't make a huge difference, but it makes enough of a difference in my opinion as far as Ubers goes. And Mewtwo's not really that great this generation in Sword and Shield. It's kind of just outclassed by everything. So I can't even really give it Sword and Shield stats off of that. It's really just specifically um, the really just the tier for Nat Dex. Um, and if we pull up Nat Dex AG, I'm pretty sure Mewtwo Y is still better. I would still personally say Mewtwo Y is better, even if the general consensus isn't. But if I remember correctly, Mewtwo isn't even actually a viable mon, and Mewtwo Y is like pseudo viable. Uh, yeah, Mew they're both actually D tier. Um, so doesn't really change that anyway. I still think Mewtwo Y offers a little bit more with the speed. Uh, it's slightly better on webs teams too, in my personal opinion. Uh, just again, because the speed advantage helps a lot with mons that are like just under base 80 scarf, or even just other 130s to be honest, because there are a few of those mons like Mega Gengar, for example. This doesn't need to risk a speed tie, whereas Mewtwo does. So yeah, I, I do stand by that. Um, but Gallery Rapid Ash is up next F tier, but it's definitely probably going to be our best F tier or one of them. Fairy Psychic is really cool. It's a Psychic type that can handle other other Dark types, which is really cool with a stab at that. And Psychic is really good for poisons, albeit huge steel checks. Well, uh, a lot of steels would check this really well, but obviously it does get options like Sophic Tantrum for those, so I'm not really too concerned. I think it's actually high horsepower, but the point being is that Rapid Ash does get the coverage for this. Um, so I'm not really too concerned. The special attack is also not terrible, at least as far as low tier standards goes, and it, it does get Calm Mind. I know Galar Ponyta actually runs Calm Mind sets, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it does really well with them too in Little Cup because it gets like Mystical Fire. So honestly, really cool mod. It gets a ton of good coverage and it gets some good utility boosts too. I think it gets Will-O-Wisp if I remember. No, it doesn't. It's something in regular Ponyta. Still gets recovery though, uh, and Healing Wish, which is really nice. So solid F tier, probably one of our better ones. Regular Slowbro is an easy A tier. This mod with Boots' this gen, as well as Teleport especially, has been incredible. Great option for regen teams if you're looking for some really bulky water. Great check to a lot of top tier Pokemon like Garchomp and Weavile. Well, not really Weavile, but Banded Weavile and Ice Moves at least. This can kind of be a check, which is, is one of those things where it's weird because certain certain Weavile switchins would end up really only being able to switch into choice sets. And if nothing else, if you know for a fact Weavile is choice locked into an ice move, you switch in Slowbro, then when they're forced out, teleport into a check for that Pokemon. And it's one of those things where Slowbro can weirdly enough to check a Pokemon that normally should be just destroying it. Um, but even still, as far as like not weird checks go, stuff like Lando, this is great for Garchomp, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Melmetal too with Helmet, but that does risk T-Punch, obviously. I just mentioned that because of the Melmetal suspect test going on now. Uh, the point being is that Slowbro is still a really decent OU mon. Um, I know it's not where it was at certain points in the metagame, and it's definitely like very all over the place, to say the least, viability-wise, but it's still a cool not dex mod even at that. Uh, just obviously, Slowbro does have a bit of contention with other bulky waters, like Pex, depending on the meta, um, but it's one of those things that really just kind of changes based on what actually is viable in the tier. Mega Slowbro, speaking of, uh, it's literally just right as viable. I think the difference is, is that I think that regular Slowbro values boots slightly more, which is pretty good for it. Uh, whereas, obviously, you can't really do that with Mega Slowbro. Both are still really good, and Mega Slowbro does have its benefits in Nadex AG, for example, just being a slightly better breaker and a better Fizz Def wall, at least it, once you actually have Mega Evolved. Um, and there's a couple other things going for it, too, that I think that Mega Slowbro does benefit. But the benefits mostly just be come from the fact that you're basing it off of a regular Slowbro. On top of that as well, uh, I will say that I think that Mega Slowbro, it's definitely, like, I feel like it's one of those things where I think a Mega Slowbro in itself is a good mod, it's just outclassed by regular Slowbro. But I don't think it makes Mega Slowbro 
bad. I just think that it's similar to the Mega Zam thing, where just because you're playing Mega Zam in a tier with Ubers doesn't mean that Mega Zam doesn't also deserve to be in that tier. It's just that there's 17 other mods that do its exact role, a significantly better amount. So Mega Zam is still A tier, just there's no real reason to use it over regular Slowbro unless you're trying to get a little bit more of a fizz death boost, which some teams might need, but it's definitely pretty rare. Uh, I will say though that it does help a lot with Melmetal, despite not having helmet. You're able to take the hits a lot better. Galar Slowbro, uh, this is definitely a solid B tier. Really cool with Quick, quick Draw plus Regen. Uh, you're able to get a lot of either 50 50s with priority or just being really bulky psychic. Great Assault Best Mon. Poison Psychic has proven to be amazing this generation as far as Spinef rolls, which we've actually seen from Galar Slow King, which is going to also be in the A tier, which is right below Zam. Again, another, it's just better Galar Slowbro. They both run really good bulky Assault Best sets that are meant to just chew everything with Regen spam. Just Galar Slowbro does it better. Uh, the one thing that doesn't keep the Galar Slow, well, uh, Galar Slow King does it better. I will say though, the one thing that keeps Galar Slow Bro out of C tier is Quick Draw though, having the 50 50 of Quick Draw versus Regen. So it's definitely really decent for it, and it's proven to make Galar Slow Bro, despite having significantly worse bulk than Galar Slow King, a really good standout in the low tiers. But Galar Slow King though is honestly just, again, similar to Slow Bro, it kind of phases in and out depending on what's viable in OU. Uh, there have been some formats where this has been like an A tier, A minus in OU. Uh, typically though, Ben in the A minus to A plus range, right now it's currently sitting in the A plus range. I think for Nat Dex even, it's still sitting in the, I, I want to say the B plus range, uh, which is really good. But again, it just goes to show that it really just, oh, it's actually B, uh, but it just goes to show that it depends on what the surge in the meta is. Because right now the Nat Dex meta just favors regular slow bar slightly more. But at the same time, Galar Slow King has been consistently a little bit more dominating. And on top of that as well, Galar Slow King, I think is a little bit higher of a ceiling just because it's a lot more brain dead in my personal opinion. Uh, but they're both honestly still incredible Pokemon. Uh, like I could genuinely get you swapping either Slowbro or Galar Slowbro on uh, Galar Slow King in the A tier. I think they're both definitively above Mega Slowbro though. Um, next up though, we have Hypno, terrible psychic type. I will say though, uh, as far as low tier psychics go, this is of a few cool things like Belly Drum. I think it gets Belly Drum, I want to say. Um, yeah, it does get Belly Drum, but it's terrible offense of 73. Uh, and terrible speed, too, of 67. Uh, you get stuff like Wish, and I think it gets Teleport, too. Yeah, Teleport and Wish, but Mediocre HP. And there's a lot better Wish Passers anyway. Also, as far as a lot of low tier mods go that are bulky, they don't really care about an 85 base Wish. And also, Hypno, again, it's just kind of a liability on teams. Um, it's, it's one of those monsters cool in theory, but terrible distribution of stats. Uh, Executor, really cool F tier Psychic. Uh, Weather Ball is really good on this. It's just Psychic competition's a lot higher, so I'm gonna put it in F tier. Actually, right below Gallery Rapidash, just because Gallery Rapidash is a lot better at handling Psychic checks, which is pretty good for it. And Executor's speed is a little too low for taking advantage of Chlorophyll. Uh, but at the same time, though, Executor does have Harvest, and it's still a really cool Trick Room Pokemon. Uh, and its coverage is still pretty decent, just again just barely misses the mark if only this had like some really good option like focus blast for example which would be amazing for handling checks uh because i'm pretty sure the best special check this actually has would be i want to say it gets like an oh, infestation okay i thought i got pollen puff at least that's really bad yeah i can't even there's not really even like an actual way to handle dark types which is really bad for the psychic typing at least uh and even still at best it's handling grass checks kind of okay with stuff like H power for fires so f tier starmie this is a solid uh i'm gonna give starmie actually a low a i will say i know this is a really top tier mon in bdsp similar to zam the difference is though is zam is kind of viable in sword and shield and starmie's sitting real pretty in like the nu tier and I think it's just one of those things where Alakazam at least can kind of keep up with power creep this gen. Stuff like Expanding Force with Magic Garden Focus Sash is really hard to actually switch in for a lot of teams. And I know that Starmie can run those sets in theory. The difference is though is that Zam can guarantee at least get off a nasty plot before doing so, which is amazing for it when you're also adding on Psychic Terrain boosting. Starmie needs to pop a Meteor Beam, which isn't even guaranteed to hit. And also again, it's just slightly slower than Zam. And sometimes that one 20 makes a difference. Zam also doesn't need to worry about running boots to be immune to hazards, it just has an ability that is. So I think they're both A tiers to be honest, they're both incredible mons of BDSP, two of like the top 10, 15 mons in my opinion. But Zam definitely holds up a lot better in Sword and Shield, and Starmie just 
doesn't. It's just Mons got a lot better than Starmie and Zam happened to get really buffed I think by the generation being one of those few Mons that never needs to consider boots in its arsenal. So yeah, it's still an A tier, just low on the A tier spectrum. Uh, Mr. Mime, uh, definitely going to be higher on the F tier again. I will say, I think someone, uh, no, never mind, I'm thinking of two different tier lists. Um, someone did point out that Zam, uh, that uh, Mr. Mime is kind of a cool bond of doubles in one of my, my third tier lists, actually. Um, but I still think that Mr. Mime is one of those things that can do a lot of things in doubles well, and I don't think I covered those really that well in the in the fairy tier list to be fair um but one of those things that just so many pokemon to cover not enough time uh mr mime does get some cool utility though stuff like fake out uh gets the dual screens which are really useful you get trick room it has a lot of cool things in its arsenal even ally switch the difference is though is that i think there are a lot of other pokemon that do a lot better with other stabs especially when we look into psychic type pokemon they have a lot better you uh abilities or just bulk to do this sort of role so it's still an f tier psychic but I, I did gloss over that a lot i mostly talked about singles presence which is still not terrible for a low tier psychic uh it's one of those mods that typically is a decent ish pu mon or like it's an untiered mon that does okay enough to maybe be niche in pu uh it's kind of cool in bdsp as i mentioned it's like a trick mon um and galler galler rhyme on a yeah galler mime is just gonna be right below eggy i think uh the screen cleaner is really cool i think it's better than mr rhyme at least uh, i forget why i tear this in the ice tier list but it doesn't really matter because like, competition is way too high i can't justify making this one of the better psychics because it's not um actually i'm gonna put it right below cadabra because cadabra is 105 speed and again similar to the zam note hazard immunity is really really good for this pokemon just built into its arsenal and Kadabra also sadly Kadabra actually doesn't get nasty plot which would have been amazing for it if it did uh if Kadabra got a nasty plot this would honestly be a really strong c tier psychic uh just right below a rai but actually maybe even right above a rai um but the point being is it would have been if it just had nasty plot because this would be really hard for a lot of lower tiers to switch in on um but the point being though is that mr ron uh, mr ryan gallagher and mr mime still f tier psychics but they're both pretty cool options uh jinx I'm gonna put Jinx right above Eggy. Uh, Jinx is a pretty interesting one. This does actually get coverage as far as steals go. I think Mr. Rhyme did too, and I think Mr. Mime. Well, obviously, Mr. I know Mr. Mime does with fairies, um, but yeah, Mr. Mime Galar still does at the very least, which is still really good for it. Um, but Mr. Mime Galar just 100 speed isn't really that great, and Psychic Ice isn't too terrifying of a typing. And I think the difference actually. No, it's a pretty good typing, actually. I think that Mr. I the Jinx, though, does outclass it a little bit. I forget what I tiered these two in the initial vid, but I think that I'm, right now, as far as, uh, I know for Ice, I think I tiered Mr. Mime Galar actually higher, but I think I'm changing my stance on that as far as psychic goes. I think the dry skin immunity is pretty cool on Jinx. Uh, it does especially help with how many lower tier waters are in like the pu sort of range uh jinx also has some pretty cool utility as far as its sets go and i know Mis mr mime gallery does too um but it, i think that i don't know i'm really torn on these two i'll be honest um because they both get pretty much the same move pools i think that jinx just a slightly better breaker and i think that that's kind of a big difference to make because the speed is only a five base difference which was actually what i was initially gonna flop and put mime over jinx for over in a second but this is like an extra 25 special attack on Mr. Mime, which is a pretty big deal as far as the Galar form goes. I still think that ultimately having the Fairy Stab is better for regular Mr. Mime, but as far as the Galar form goes, I think I'm actually going to put Jinx above it. Um, Articuno Galar is definitely a solid C tier psychic, actually. It's a pretty cool mod in doubles, actually, in the non restricted formats. And obviously, this is also a really good user as far as C plus terrain sets with expanding force. Um, you can also just make this mod in general be a really cool bulky psychic to actually take out in low tiers. It's a really decent PU mod. Uh, obviously, being able to take advantage of other defog options with competitive is really nice. It's got its own built in recover, which means it's not even giving up flying type to make itself now touchable by earthquake, which is really cool. Uh, so, dual screens, nice coverage. A freezing psychic move is also really cool. Easy C tier psychic, in my opinion. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it in D tier. It's going to be a really high one in D tier, though. Uh, Mega Mewtwo X, this gets a solid uh, this gets a solid S tier, I think, as well. Well, it's obviously going to be an S tier. Um, but I think I'm going to put it above Mewtwo Y. The Psychic Fighting type is honestly really cool. Uh, sadly, though, this doesn't end up... I mean, sadly, I kind of wish this thing just got 
I, I kind of wish I just got a Mewtwo speed buff. Actually, no, the speed buff for Mewtwo is really good. I do still value it over regular Mewtwo because this is basically just a pre-mega regular Mewtwo. You can still take advantage of stuff like a nerve, for example, and then you suddenly become an amazing physical breaker and the counterplay is so varied. So I do think it's better than regular Mewtwo, albeit it's not better than why as far as singles goes. Cause again, I think the 140 speed when you're in a mega Gengar meta is a pretty big deal for Mewtwo forms. Uh, regular Mew, this is a solid A tier Pokemon. I'm gonna put it right above, right above Gal uh, uh, Mega Slowbro. Mew is a pretty interesting Pokemon to say the least. It's one of those months, never like a top tier Pokemon in a meta game, and it's always just gonna kind of exist in OU. But that's fine enough. Uh, Mew is one of those things that's viable in every single OU, even if it's no, no longer like a top of the meta game Pokemon. It does literally everything. It's kind of hard to explain what Mew does. It just does everything kind of average, but. That's why we have, for example, if you're looking for a defensive psychic, go with regular Slowbro. Spidef psychic, go with Galar Slowbro. Really good breaker, go with Alakazam. But Mewtwo, on a Mew can do all of these things and it's the team preview thing. You never know what it will do unless the team super telegraphs it. So, A tier. Zatu gets a solid D tier. Uh, I know that this obviously has the low tier psychic competition with Galar Articuno, uh, but I think that one thing it does actually the magic bounce is such a big thing actually for it i'll be honest have being able to bounce back hazards while still running boots and you can still clear them anyway even if your opponent gets them up uh this is a really good baton passer as far as anything goes goes compared to stuff like mime at least i think it's slightly better because you also deter hazards which is really good uh this gets some really good stall breaking stuff like nightshade from roost for example really good typing pretty decent bulk too albeit it's not anything insane with a psychic flying typing and you have kind of average bulk it's decent once you start setting up cosmic powers and go for short power sweep uh, easy C tier psychic. Espeon also gets C tier. Uh, it's a really cool psychic as far as offensive goes. Magic Bounce, again, really good ability for it. Uh, it's really cool as far as BDSP goes. I think this is like a UU Arumon. And even as far as Sword and Shield goes, I think Espeon's like an NU Pokemon. Oh, no, it's PUBL. I still do value this as far as BDSP standard goes a lot higher. Um, specifically because in BDSP, Espeon doesn't really have to worry about boots competition, so its magic bounce is a lot higher. Uh, whereas Zatu, it's losing out a lot on Espeon, considering the fact that it is actually rock weak, so not having boots matters a lot more there. And also, Espeon is basically just a pseudo Zam in its tier, where it's just breaking the tier because there's not really a pursuit dark type to trap it. So, they're both pretty interchangeable, and truthfully, this whole C tier is pretty interchangeable order wise, but I do value Espeon slightly more. A uh, regular Slowking, um, again, this is just. In my opinion, it's just one of those things that kind of shuffles here with the OU Psychics, where it just depends on what the meta really favors. It is just worse at its job though than Galar Slowking, but Slowking in general is still a fairly decent Psychic type. It's actually a pretty obnoxious one to switch in on. Uh, it's slightly better for stuff like Nidos, for example, because it's not weak to Earth Power, though Galar Slowking can still take it. Uh, this is also an actual psychic resist, which is great because Galar Slowking, again, is neutral psychic, which is pretty valuable as far as the tier having stuff like Lele. You could at least teleport into an offensive check for it on Lele, which is pretty good. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that Slowking can do. It's just an incredible AV mon, an incredible teleport spit F mon, easy A tier, but again, it's really interchangeable which one of those is better for the slows. Unknown F tier, literally, it's going to be the worst psychic on this list. End of story. Wobbuffet, on the other hand, I can't lie, I'm conflicted on where to put Wobbuffet. On one hand, I think you could make a solid S tier argument for this. This is an incredible Shadow Tag Mon. On the other hand, though, I think you could make an incredible F tier argument for this because a lot of singles formats ban Shadow Tag, and even the ones that do, it's insanely outclassed by Gothitelle. So, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Special fucking day. We're putting a row. We're going to put this right at the top of the tier list. I'm literally just going to put all of these Shadow Tag Mons in here because i don't know what the fuck to do with shadow tag i'll be honest i i know i tiered doug as if shadow tag was a thing and if uh doug i think i, I forget how i even tiered doug i'll be honest but this is such a special case i think because shadow tag is one of those things i think the shadow tag mons also really fucking vary themselves in quality but they're so fucking broken like like shadow tag mons always will find a way and you could even stack these on teams there are teams that anything goes through several generations of teams that run Gothitelle, Gotharita, Wob, and just will try and PP stall the shit out of teams, and they're so fucking good. Even as far as certain teams go, some teams actually do like Wobbuffet a little bit better, albeit very few teams do, but there are, there have definitely been builds in the past that do prefer the counter Wob or the mirror coat Wob, just because of the fact that it's a much quicker way to take out offensive threats. So while I think a Gothitelle is typically the better one, and I think this is the order for them at the very least, 
There definitely are metagames though that do prefer Wobbuffet. And it's just such a weird, it really is a weird thing to rank Shadow Tag Mons in my opinion, because they're so all over the place as far as viability. Like, like I genuinely think that Shadow Tag Mons make up both the best and the worst Mons for Psychics at the same time. They're truly unrankable in a tier list like this. It's just like with trying to tier fucking Ditto and Smeargle on the normal type tier list. That was so fucking awful. I should have made a separate tier for gimmick Mons. Um, but the point being is again, these are some of the best and worst Pokemon of all time. Gothitelle is an exception here though. I think Gothitelle is actually, and, and I'm gonna actually put a shadow tag right below, because Gothitelle I think does actually earn an S+, plus, um, because Gothitelle will always just be a consistently top tier Pokemon, and it's always like the best candidate among shadow, no, never mind, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it, um, because I think that again, it's too much of a niche thing, because anything you do with Gothitelle, Gothavrita can do it too. It's just that those teams typically don't need multiple mods, unless you're going with a really hard stall, and then some of those will again go with Gothavrita even. Um, but it's so much more of a damning thing than a Radiant Trap, I think, just because of what Shadow Tag Mons can do to truly outstall teams. At least Arena Trap Mons are fucking frail, and they're also kind of weak offensively. So, yeah, it's the best I'm going to do. Drafferig, F tier. This is a really terrible Mon. Um, the Psychic Immunity is actually really cool, so I'm going to put it above Hypno, but still really terrible Mon. Move Pool's kind of okay, stats or whatever. Um, anyway, F tier. It This is a terrible Pokemon. Lugia, solid S tier, um, albeit... I think that Lugia is going to be below our Mega Mewtwo's right above regular. No. Yeah. No, because Lugia... I don't know how I feel on Lugia. Because Lugia is one of those weird Pokemon. I think it's... I think Lugia is actually definitely better than all of these. Because Lugia is at least able to kind of wall shit and anything goes. Being able to wall Dynamax Pokemon is actually kind of incredible for it. I'm going to give it an S tier. But it's definitely a weaker S tier. Just we have a lot of all over the place S tiers. Celebi, solid B tier. It's a really cool mon, actually. Grass Psychic is really terrible typing defensively. But... This does do a lot for teams. It's a great pivot, rocker, plot Pokemon, utility piece, uh, cleric. It does a lot of different things. It's just a worse version of Mew, in my opinion. It's the best way to describe it. In fact, while we're on the subject of worse versions of Mew, let's tier all the other Pixies because they all basically do the same thing as Mew. Uh, Rachi, slightly better than Mega Slowbro, but it's still a worse version of Mew. This does have a couple benefits though. For example, it's a pretty decent Lottie check in BDSP, which is really actually incredible for it on top of that as well uh this is a really cool scarfer in low tiers as far as sword and shield goes you can just iron head flinch shit or even again just the spinef rocks is an incredible set on it um but rachi kind of fell from grace not being able to resist or yeah be neutral to ghost and dark is really bad for it but i think it was also a necessary buff still a tier in my opinion i think it's still good enough at what it does in bdsp actually no i'm gonna put it in b tier but i'm gonna put it at the top of b um, I don't remember where I tiered it in seal, but it doesn't really matter. I think it's, again, just top of B tier. Gardevoir, um, well, actually, hold on. I'm not finished tiering the Mew clones. Um, actually, I am finished tiering the Mew clones. The rest of them are way too different. Um, oh, actually, no. Necrozma is a Mew clone. Uh, I know that people might not think of Necrozma as a Mew clone, but when you really think about it, <laughs> Necrozma is a mon that can set up specially and tear through teams of store power sets. It's a mon that can, or just coverage sets. It's a mon that is a bulky psychic on a lot of teams. It's a mon that can set hazards as a bulky psychic. It's a mon that will be able to run stuff like Dragon Dance variants. It can go for speed boosting weakness policy sets. It's basically a Mew clone. Uh, I do think that Necrozma, though, is a little bit weaker on the spectrum, albeit it is still a really good Mew clone. Um, as far as as far as far Mew clones go, though, it's definitely not in the A tier. I think it's actually going to be in the low C tier. Uh, it's still a really terrifying Mew clone, in my opinion. Uh, Prism Armor is an incredible ability, and it's a really easy mod to just snowball weakness policy sets with. But I don't actually think that this is better than stuff like Celebi, for example, which Celebi is, at the very least, again, a really good pivot for teams and it i think a selby's difference is the fact that it can pivot and i think if the Kozma had that it would actually probably be an a tier pokemon uh but when you're comparing to other mew clones that also have pivot on top of all those other same roles they do and they do them all pretty similarly well to necrozma albeit necrozma can do the weakness policy sets better than all of them besides maybe mew i think that, that definitely does hurt its ranking at least a little bit on here also rachi at least when comparing to rachi for example rachi has some decent doubles viability at least when you're not talking about VGC because of stuff like Follow Me and other bullshit utility that it gets. Uh, and Celebi, at least again, Healing Wish Mon is pretty good for certain teams. So yeah, it's how I'll stand in the rankings. 
Uh, Gardevoir, it's a decent psychic, actually. I'm gonna put this one right below Rachi, actually. Uh, Gardevoir is a really cool mon as far as BDSP goes. It's an incredible offensive potent, uh, offensive piece. Great Scarf, Trick Room, Specs, Calm Mind Pokemon. Uh, even in Sword and Shield, this is still a pretty okay Pokemon as far as the RU tier goes. Psychic Fairy is just one of those typing is so potent offensively. Uh, it's why I'm also gonna put Mega Gardevoir. Um, again, I figure out where I put these, but I'm gonna put Mega Gardevoir just right above it. Um, these are both really good options as far as their tiers go. Mega Gardevoir is just kind of outclassed by a lot of other Megas, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. Um, and for similar reasoning, actually, and for quite literally basically the same reasoning, I'm actually going to put Mega Gallade right above it. Um, basically, these are two Psychic types that both are outclassed by a ton of other Megas in OU. They are both Psychic types that are meant to cover other Psychic checks, such as Dark Typing. I think that Mega Gallade's speed is really useful for it, but Mega... Kallade is outclassed by Mega Metacham that is able to break a lot of other teams significantly better, which as far as the current Nadex anything goes, meta, uh, not Dexo U meta goes, the breaking from Mega Metacham truthfully is more appropriate, which I guess makes a lot of sense because speaking of, Mega Metacham, this is a really solid Mega, um, actually I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Mega Gallade in the A tier, but I'm gonna put it really low in the A tier, um, like below Starmie. Uh, I think Mega Gallade's difference though is the fact that it can actually, the 110 speed is really useful because of how many 100 base Pokemon are truly like really viable in OU. Uh, so I'm going to put this in the low A tier. Mega Metacham though is a solid A tier. I'm actually going to put it right above Mew. Uh, it's a really incredible breaker as far as the Natdex anything goes, Meta goes, on a Natdex OU Meta goes. There's not really a lot of really strong Mega Metacham switches and the really the best counterplay to this is just outpacing it in my opinion or maybe going with like some helmet slowbro for example that can regen out but even still that risks stuff like thunder punch a uh, really terrifying breaker for the meta in my opinion so easy a tier for metacham regular metacham is still a c tier i think i do this is a c tier psychic and i think it's one of the better ones uh this is again one of those psychics that can handle a lot of other dark types it's really good for it uh but sadly though just kind of caught by power creep really is all it is um, but Metachamp still isn't a great choice mon, whether Scarf or Band, it's still a really terrifying mod to switch in on. Just the 60 attack versus 100, as I mentioned with the fighting type tier list, is a huge change in how much this mod can actually break. Uh, so solid C tier Psychic still, but just not where it could be compared to Mega Metacham. Uh, Grumpig? Grumpig definitely is kind of an okay mon, um, albeit it's definitely worse than a lot of other F tier Psychics, but I think that Thick Fat's kind of a cool defensive ability. Uh, just a slightly better version of, well, no, actually, I'm gonna tear it below, I'm gonna tear it below Hypno, because if nothing else, Hypno at least gets Wish and Teleport, which is pretty cool for it. Grumpy gets, like, no recovery. F tier. Lunatone. Lunatone and Solrock both are terrible. Um, I will say, though, these weirdly enough, I know there are, there are very niche teams that are trying to be gimmicky that can run these as Pedon checks. They're still fucking terrible Pokemon. Golduck is a Pedon check that doesn't make, make it an A tier on this tier list. F tier. Claydol for same reasoning. Uh, the difference is though that Claydol gets Rapid Spin, which is some form of utility, so I'll at least put it above the others. Chimeco, really terrible psychic. Again, we're getting into a lot of these really shitty psychics. Um, Chimeco gets like healing mission, a lot of good utility on paper, but if the stats are just really bad to pull off any of it, I'll put it above Hypno because of how much utility this actually gets. It's like Defog, Heal Ball, Knock Off, Healing Wish, etc. But still terrible. Mega Metagross, finally, a really good S tier psychic. This is a really incredible breaker. Uh, while it doesn't really have a typing that benefits psychic necessarily, um, this does have a typing at the very least that benefits just killing a lot of the Uber's metagame because the steel type that for well, it's, I don't know, the typing doesn't really matter defensively speaking, but offensively speaking goes, this is an incredible Xerneas check, and it's one of the better ones as far as priority goes because unlike Mega Lucario, it's bulky enough to take a Moonblast while still being able to go for Meteor Bash into a Bullet Punch in case it for some reason misses or doesn't KO. So Bullet Punch is still a nice last ditch option on this, but it doesn't need to always just bank on priority. Unlike Slant Mega Lucario, which has to go for priority unless if Xerneas hasn't gotten a Geomancy off and you confirm it's not Scarf, or for something like a Dusk Mane, where if it's too low, you can't just go for a priority hit on that. So Mega Metagross is a nice kind of middle ground for this as far as the offensive steals go in Ubers. And I'm actually going to, on that note, uh, oh, right, I was gonna tear, I was gonna tear Mega Lucario, but I'm thinking of steals and psychics, um, and Mega Lucario is still fighting. Uh, anyway, next up though, we do have regular Metagross, still a really cool B tier psychic. I think that personally, it's just right below Rachi. I forget where I tier these two as far as the steel tier list, but I'm thinking right now, I'm putting it right below Rachi. I think Rachi having recovery for psychic is a little more important for the role. Um, still better than the guards in my opinion, just able to, again, be a really nice utility mon, rocker, breaker, 
it's one of the best UU mons as far as BDSP UU goes, and it's a pretty decently viable mon as far as BDSP OU goes. Uh, so it's a decent B tier in my opinion. Also, weakness policies has some VGC are pretty incredible on this. Oh wait, no, actually, I, th I think I did tier it above Rachi because the weakness policy VGC sets, they are really amazing on this. Um, I'm actually going to put it right in the A tier because this is also a really good AV mon even in Spike Meth Cup. Um, so I'm going to put it in the bottom of A tier, I think. Maybe, maybe I might change it to B when we see the tier list. Uh, Latios. Latios gets a solid A tier. Latios gets a really solid A tier. I'm going to put it right above Mew. Um, I'm not putting this in Ubers despite being a BDSP Uber. It's too niche in anything. And, uh, Nat Dixon, OU, Sword and Shield Metas go. But that's why I'm at least the BDSP ban is why I'm going to put it above Mew and Latios. Uh, actually, yeah, no, I'm going to... Because I know that I put Zam above here. Um... Okay, no, I'm gonna put Latios above. What am I saying? Because I'm gonna—it's gonna sound really hypocritical when I say the reasoning. Otherwise, um, Latios still is an incredible psychic type. Uh, the difference is though is that similarly to stuff, for example, like uh, Alakazam, this is just one of those mons. It's kind of just a niche not next mon. It's a niche sword and shield Pokemon. Um, it's not really ever something that's actually gonna be OU again. There, it's literally just Zam. But the difference is this has a BDSP. OU ban and Zam doesn't. Otherwise, they're basically the same reasoning. Uh, Mega Latios, Mega Latios, I'm not gonna lie, it's just one of those things that similarly to Mega Slowbro, etc., there's just not really a reason to use this over Mega. Um, actually, no, that's a lie. Mega Latios actually is slightly better. The difference is though, is it doesn't have a BDSP meta to compete in, it's just not X. And Mega Latios is still kind of outclassed by a lot of other Megas. Mega Latios, on the other hand, is actually incredible in BDSP. One of the better mons in that tier. I'm actually going to put Mega Latios at the really high end of the tiering. Uh, Mega Latios is one of those mons that's really hard to actually kill. It's like literally an A-plus viable Pokemon because it's really good in a lot of balances and even on certain offenses, though, typically, again, this is really just meant to be a balance mon, which is really weird because when you think about it, uh, Mega Latios is like an A plus viable Pokemon, and it just kind of goes to show, I guess, how flawed usage can be as a tiering format. Uh, because Mega Latios is considered in like the top 10, 15 Pokemon, but it's not even an actual OU Pokemon, which is really weird to think about when we actually say that out loud. Uh, which is why I think that the potential to be viable matters more than the actual tiering. Because again, if we look at it, it's literally one of the 10 most viable Pokemon, which again, this says a lot. But Mega Latias, I still actually do think it's an incredible psychic. Just had to go on that tangent for a bit. Now, we get into the Deoxys forms. Deoxys Defense is definitely a solid A tier psychic. I'm going to put it right above right above Mega Slowbro. It's a really cool hazard mon. Uh I'm pretty sure that Deoxys Defense actually is allowed. Yeah, it is allowed this gen in that decks. It's one of those like mid-tier psychics. Um really cool hazard support, obviously. Teleport is amazing against Pokemon. Sadly, it didn't keep its T spikes it got in BDSP, or that would be really good on it. Um, as far as the other psychics go, though, Deoxys Defense is a low S tier. It's just a worse version. It well, actually, no, I'm going to put it above Zam because if nothing else, it's a good hazard Pokemon. Um, Deoxys Attack is actually a really good psychic, still an S tier, though. And Deoxys Normal, I am going to put because it's just a Mega Alakazam that can hold items. So I'm going to put it right above Mega Alakazam. Um, but these are both pretty. Well, actually, this one and the attack form are both pretty similar. They're both basically just offensive pieces that can run life orb, focus ash, etc. Uh, they're both mixed offensive options. It just Deoxys Normal is a worse version. Uh, and then Deoxys Speed though is a really cool hazard mon. It's a really cool lead actually, as far as Nat Dex goes. Um, Bronzong, Bronzong is a really solid B tier steal uh, on a B tier psychic. Really good on Trick Room teams. Really good support piece. I think it's just slightly outclassed by Metagross, just because Metagross is also a really good offensive piece in VGC. Um, but Bronzong's still really actually good. It's a great Xerneas check as far as non Uber's Pokemon go. Uh, it's really good in BDSP as like a RUU Pokemon. It's a decent Pokemon as far as Sword and Shield goes in like the RU setting. So I'll put it, I'll put it in the B tier over the guards at least because if nothing else, again, doubles viability helps this a lot. Galliad's a really shit Pokemon, I'll be honest. Um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in D tier. I think if nothing else, again, similar to Articuno, yeah, this can cover its, well, actually, Unlike Articuno, this can actually cover its dark checks with stab. And uh yeah, dark types that would check it otherwise with stab. But Galar Articuno just is such a good mon as far as PU goes. I can't really justify putting Gallade over it. Um actually, no. Okay, I was looking at fucking Nat Dex for a second. Um, but even still, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is like, yeah, it's still a PU mon. I think Galad's still not terrible, but it's just one of those things that power creep really caught up to it. Uh Uxie's up next. Uxie, okay, Uxie and Mesper, I'm tearing it the same because Uxie is literally just 
a worse version of Mesprit, because if nothing else, Mesprit is like a jack of all trades, but they're both basically the same mon. It's like, it's like with the Mega Slowbro, just because Mesprit exists and it's slightly better for the meta than Yuxi is, they both still have the potential to basically just do the same thing. Like if Mesprit was banned tomorrow in PU, right? Yuxi would literally be the very, very clear candidate to take its role, because it does everything it does just a little less offensively. Azelf, on the other hand, this is a really low A tier. I'm going to put it right up above Dio. Uh, it's a pretty decent BDSP mon, actually, as far as the OU goes. Um, it's a really good offensive psychic. It's a decent one with rocks, too. It's just outclassed because there's stuff like Alakazam and Starmie that both outclass it in that offensive psychic role. Uh, Lottie, as well, is a huge one for it. Um, and I know that, again, I, I know Lottie is more viable than Sam uh, as far as Latias goes, but the difference is I think that, Lot that Alakazam also has a little bit more doubles viability. Um, but I guess I should acknowledge Latias' BSP viability. Um, and I do say doubles viability just because of the fact that this can be a really nice offensive option in like Spike Moth Cup with terrain teams. Just going for a really fast offensive expanding force option for teams is really cool. Uh, or even just skilling Magic Guard. I saw, uh, if for anyone who saw the BGC video I did with uh, with the team on Tuesday, I saw a team that's skilling Magic Guard in the Pulsephalon, which is kind of cool tech. I'll be, I think it's a lot more just a gimmick thing, but even still the fast expanding force option on Sam is really incredible for it. So it's still gonna give it A tier, but I, I just had to acknowledge Lottie's BDSP S rank. That is pretty good for it in my opinion. And it's again, I put Latios here right above Zam because of the BDSP ban. The least I can do is also acknowledge that Latios is at least still a really top tier Pokemon in BDSP. Even if I do think that Zam is a little bit better, despite the viability ranking saying otherwise, I um, just had to acknowledge it. Cresselia, really good VGC Psychic type as far as a more niche spike my thing goes. Uh, it's kind of falling off to Power Creep though, I'll be honest. It's still a really good a C tier Psychic type. I was going to say S tier for a second, but cat caught my tongue. Uh, but regardless, so it's really bulky mon, kind of just obnoxious to kill C tier. Uh, RC Psychic, one of the worst RC swarms you can really run, actually. It's easily an S tier still because it's an RC's type and it's kind of obnoxious, but oh my god, it's terrible for RC's form standards. Uh, Victini, really cool Pokemon as far as OU goes. I'm um, definitely gonna put Victini right below Mega Metacham. Uh, Victini with Z moves is great in Nat Dex, it's great boots mon in VGC. I'm uh, not in VGC, in uh. I forgot about VGC, actually. It's a really good VGC mon, too. I'll put it right above the Slow Bros and Slow King. I'm going to put it right below Latias, though, because uh, it's not like a meta definer in any of these tiers, but it's a really consistently good Pokemon in any format this thing touches as far as, like, the, the gold standard format. In Spike Mon, and uh, in VGC, it's a great partner with stuff like Groudon, and I've even seen it ran on Ogre Teams for Groudon matchups. Uh, it's a great Pokemon as far as singles goes in Nat Dex with Z moves, and it's a great Pokemon with, with Choice or boot sets in standard are you so easily a solid a tier masharna it's i should have tiered this with the mew clones but it's basically just a mew clone in all honesty just it's not a legendary uh but it's a really cool bulky psychic it's kind of just like a low tier honestly masharna is one of those mons that if it was in this tier i actually think it would be a solid d tier and i think it'd be above mesprit even gallied it's a really cool bulky psychic this gets a lot going for it uh for example masharna has a really nice actually no masharna is in the tier and it's not even tiered hmm I still think it's better than a lot of our PU psychics go. It's a really good bulky psychic, and I think it's just outclassed by Mesprit. I was going to say outclassed by Articuno, but Mesprit, to be fair, does have a lot going for it. These both have a good momentum going for them. They also have really good stealth rock sets. Uh, Misharna typically isn't allowed in a format that would allow Baton Pass, so I'm not including that in its momentum. Um, at least not viable in any formats that would allow it, I should say, because it's not a good AG mon. It's not a good doubles mon, um, because again, there's just a lot of mons that do its jobs better. Uh, but Masharna is still a really cool bulky psychic. Get stuff like Moonlight, for example, for recovery. Uh, you get stuff like Trick Room. You can set up with store power sets. Forewarn is pretty good. Synchronized as well. It's just a worse version of all of these. Actually, no, I'm going to put it in F tier. Now I'm really saying it out loud. I'm going to put it right above Eggy though. Um, Behem is literally just going to be right, a better version of this, though, because it's a better Trick Room option offensively because of Analytic. Um, but they're both, for all intents and purposes, basically the same Pokemon. Um, actually, okay, never mind. I, I Now that I've brought it up, I have to kind of tier it, but I did go out of order here because I forgot. This also actually gets teleport, which is like the one thing I mentioned. Um, and no, because it trades teleport for recovery. Like a real, no, it does have recovery. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually like a, like a D tier in my opinion. Uh, but he and being a really cool momentum gaining, also trick room Pokemon. It gets nasty plot as well to break on its own with analytic in case you're slower. This is a solid D tier. 
Um, again, I kind of jumped the gun on it. I forgot this actually got teleport, but if it didn't get teleport, I would have literally just tier these two like right around each other because they're basically just the same thing. This is just the offensive version and this is the defensive version. But teleport does make a huge difference actually, so D tier. Uh, Subat. Subat's actually a really cool Pokemon. Uh, Subat's kind of decent as far as just general utility goes. Um, unaware plus simple. It's some nice gimmick sets as far as doubles. Uh, it's a really fast type as far as low tiers go. You get stuff like Expanding Force. Just kind of gimmicky at the bright side though uh unaware is one polar opposite end of the spectrum from simple so you could really kind of confuse teams depending on which option you run and either way you'll make something out of nothing uh so d tier zen mode don't mind a tan uh this gets f tier off the premise that you have to run zen mode to make it work and you have to be at 50 percent and you can't switch out or you have to reset the zen mode uh, well, actually no you can but you can't then switch out mid turn you have to let something die and bring us back in so F tier, but it's not a known. So F tier. Uh, Sigilyph. Sigilyph is a pretty decent option, actually. I'm gonna put this thing right at the top of C. Uh, I know that Sigilyph, I know it's not like some ultra viable Pokemon this generation or anything, uh, but it's similar to the Zam argument where unlike something such as an Espeon or a Zatu, it doesn't need to bounce back hazards. It's just outright immune to them, which is pretty incredible for it. Uh, uh, Sigilyph's always been one of those really cool, like, are you Pokemon that can set up and kind of just decimate teams with like a life orb set with magic guard. And it's kind of cool. You can also go with like shift, uh, it's like a shift sets with flame orb and do some good damage. It's just one of those things I think power creep kind of caught up to Sigilyph, but it's got the right toolkit to where it will never be outright unviable. Uh, next up though, we do have Duosion. Duosion's a pretty interesting one. Uh, I know it's an NFE this gen, but it's still a really cool bulky psychic. Uh, so like, for example, this has Regenerator and Magic Guard, two amazing abilities on a Phylite set. It gets some cool options like Nightshade, for example. Um, I do think the ability kit on this does leave it at least in the D tier. Albeit, I think it's really just the fact that a lot of the Violet Mons have kind of fallen off, but even still, this is one of the better of Violet Psychics, in my opinion. Uh, Reuniclus, though. Reuniclus is a decent one. Uh, this is a really strong, potent Psychic type as far as RU standards go. Magic Guard and Regenerator, again, two amazing abilities on this. You run stuff like AV sets, Life Orb sets, Choice sets, Leftover sets, you name it. Uh, just better Sigilyph. Um, actually, I'm, I'm inclined to put this in, in the B tier. I think I'm going to put it above, like, Stella B. I uh, guess this is also a mod that has a decent UU niche, even. Uh, it's a really cool Trick Room option. It's really cool, again, just AV Sponge. It's a really decent sidekick. Hisui and Braviary. Uh, this is a solid... I'm going to put this one in this... I'm going to put it in the D tier. I think Hisui and Braviary is going to... No, I'm going to put it in C tier, actually. This is, I forgot about Sheer Force. Um, Hisui and Braviary is really cool, though. Uh, this has a lot of options going for it, such as just... Braviary's toolkit because a lot of those are rufflet moves. So even if we just look off of rufflet moves, let's say, uh, it's gonna get options like Heat Wave, for example, which is great for steals that would wall out Psychic Flying. It gets Air Slash. Uh, both of these again are Sheer Force boosted. Uh, also Hurricane again, Sheer Force boosted. You'll have Psychic options. I'm sure this will just get Raw Psychic, which again will be enough. Uh, it already has Roost again off of rufflet. So this has the toolkit actually to make a really damning Pokemon. Um, I'm actually going to put it right above Cress. I think that still the hazard immunity that Sidlift provides is a little bit better, but this has a lot going for it as far as a really good breaking set goes. It's just sadly a little bit slow for my liking, but still a solid C tier psychic. Uh, Meloetta is really cool. Again, psychic that's immune to ghosts. It's just better giraffe rig. Um, some cool momentum options for it, obviously. It's a really cool cleric. It's a really cool support piece. Great AVmon. Uh, it's solid C tier. Delphox. Uh, Delphox is pretty cool. It's a psychic type that can handle steals, offensively speaking. Just kind of, again, power creep caught up to it. I'm going to give Delphox a solid D tier rating. Um, actually, I'm going to put it right above the Mesprits. If Delphox was in the games, this would definitely be a strong NU psychic, in my opinion. Um, so I'm actually going to put it above the PU ones. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a decent mod. I think it would be a solid NU psychic. Fire Psychic is an incredible speed tier. On uh, typing, the speed tier just barely outpaces 100s, which are really hard actually for the NU tier to hit viably. Uh, there's not a lot of mons as far as the NU rating. They really do like hit around that like 90, hold like that 110 mark. There are a few that do, but Delphox would be one of the fastest mons in the tier as far as viable Pokemon go. Uh, and it's one of the only fire types that would be kind of viable too. It's also one of the only viable psychic types that I could think of in this tier. Uh, outside of like Starmie, which to be fair, maybe Starmie actually bumps it down. Um, but at the same time though, weirdly enough, there's so few good dark types in this tier. I think you could actually make a case that you could run Psy Spam. It's really just straight beyond. And you could throw on a good ground type for that. Um, you have six, they're both F tier. Uh, the difference is though, is that only one of these gets Prankster, so I do actually need to figure out which one that is. It is Meow, it's the blue one. Okay, so Meowstic male can get a solid right above Masharna, and Meowstic female 
can be tiered under the rejects. Uh, Meowstic Female with competitive, it doesn't really actually matter because Meowstic Female gets a pretty fucking terrible move pool. Uh, this doesn't really have anything actually going for it coverage wise for any sort of psychic weaknesses. It's pretty lackluster. Offense is at 83. It has the Delphox speed tier, sure, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because this thing's move pool is kind of shit. Um, actually, no, 104 speed is really good. I can't undervalue that. I'll put it above like Giraffe Rig. Um, still worse than Kadabra though. I just use Kadabra. F tier. Malamar, really cool Pokemon actually. I think this is a decent one. Um, we're going to put this above Articuno Galar and I'm going to put Malamar in the D tier. I know this is an untier Pokemon, but as far as doubles goes, this actually does have some niche in the non-restricted formats. Uh, but contrary, for example, I think I even saw a team at one point in a restricted meta where this was doing stuff. But contrary, regardless, is a really cool ability for this. This can kind of snowball on trick room builds, um, especially with uh, opposing Dynamax options. If your opponent's going for Dynamax, it's going to drop your stats. This can now boost its stats off of that because Dynamax is spread. So you can't actually choose which, well, the stat drops are spread. So you can't choose which Pokemon will do well which pokemon will or won't get the spit f drop so i think a malamar has that going for it actually as far as a doubles viability goes and even in singles i know it's an untiered pokemon but it's a pretty good untiered pokemon in my opinion with stuff like superpower and rest sets and then going for psychic stab or even just going for like a resto chesto build instead of rest talk uh with superpower and psychic move this is a decent mon in my opinion easy d tier hoopa hoopa would be a pretty strong pokemon um, I'm gonna put it right above Galley. This is an offensive, really good Spice or Scarf Mon. Just speed tier kind of sucks, and typing sucks defensively, but still really decent as far as general Pokemon goes because of how good this Mon is offensively with 130 special attack. Uh, and it has decent coverage too. Like it has Focus Blast for the Dark types, so it would four times resist it, as well as the normal types that are immune to Ghost Stab or the Steel types that would wall Psychic. So really good offensive kit, just sadly terrible typing and really lackluster speed tier. And terrible typing, I mean defensively, so D tier. Hoopa and Bound is a really solid A tier. I, th I don't think I actually did Dark yet, um, so I didn't get into my Hoopa and Bound argument, but I actually do think a Hoopa and Bound is a pretty solid Spef Mon. It's really good legendary in general. Um, Hoopa and Bound, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it right above DoD. This is a really potent Mon as far as just general competitive standards go. Um, I do rate Hoopa and Bound pretty well, actually. I think it's a really good breaker if we're gonna get into not next tiering. Um, it says it's the C tier. Personally, I still think it's actually better than everything else on here. Um, because I think the difference is that DoD, it's one of those mons that, while it's a really good defensive wall, it's a really good defensive hazard setter, a lot of mons run boots. And I think that if nothing else, Hoopa and Bound is a mon that can at least try and break through teams really well. And I think if you were to run Hoopa and Bound as far as the Nat Dicks tiering goes, and maybe this is just one of those things where, similar to the Latios, where the potential to be used doesn't really reflect uh, what it can actually provide against this metagame. Uh, but I do think that at the very least, the typing does maul a lot of current common builds. If we were to look at a Nat Dex OU tiers on a uh, team, for example, uh, we can actually, fuck. Yeah, okay, so there's some up right now. Uh, there's literally a balance right now with uh, SD Cartana and Megalayas, where the entire balance portion of this team gets fucked by Hoopa. Uh, Pex, for example, gets thrown out the window. Uh, Clefable doesn't really switch in on a choice spec psychic move. Heatran while it would be the psychic switch in on this team besides lottie lottie can't really switch in on psychic moves because it's dark and hedron still gets fucked by focus blast really the best check on this team for it would be something like a cartana and even still cartana's issues are the fact that it can't switch in ever you need to pick a sack on this sort of team and this basically invalidates any sort of balance in my opinion so easy a tier uh or choreo pretty terrible mon but i can't lie this is in doubles dancer would be pretty cool for it and psychic could actually benefit uh, because I would be fucking shocked if this doesn't get any sort of expanding force move. Uh, even still, even if it didn't, uh, Dancer is a pretty good ability and it's kind of niche. We've actually seen Oricorio do some solid, well, niche enough in small tour performances in VGC in 17, 18, and 19. Uh, I think it's Dancer alone is kind of enough to at least make it viable. So D tier. Uh, next up is Oranguru, an actual viable Pokemon. Uh, we have this in the solid, I'm gonna put this in the solid D tier as well. Decent VGC Pokemon. Um, the Ghost Mew is really good. Instruct is a great ability on this. I'm gonna put it just right above Swoobat, uh, because it's so unviable in singles. Um, Savali Psychic, really terrible for Savali typing, because it's Psychic that doesn't get recovery, and Psychic offensively on a Mon that's just slow isn't that great. Its stats, though, are good enough to put it above stuff like Giraffe Rig, Meow Stick, etc. But Kadabra, I think, is a lot more potent, so we'll keep it like that. Uh, Bruxish, I think, is pretty cool. Uh, Priority immunity is really nice. Uh, also, the water ghost and uh, the water psychic typing is really nice. Uh, but sadly, though, it's so fucking, it's so fucking terrible in Natnex, 
Uh, so I'm gonna put it like right at the bottom of D. I think it's pretty justified because it's toolkit's pretty cool. Uh, Bruxish, if we were to look at just what this thing gets, it's decent speed trait, 92, 105 offense. You get stuff like Dazzling and Shangjia, uh, which are both really good offensive abilities for teams. Uh, stuff like Crunch for Shangjia, for example, as well as Psychic Fangs. Uh, and if we were to look at the uh, just general other options for coverage, this doesn't get a lot else, uh, but it gets enough. It gets enough. I think that realistically, Water Dark Psychic enough is. Like enough for most teams on a physical mod. Solid D tier in my opinion. Lele, this is gonna get top of A tier actually. Well, no, not top of A tier. I'm gonna put it above Victini though. Uh, Lele is an incredible breaker as far as Nat decks as well as Sword and Shield goes. And I will say that I think that you could make a case for moving Lele higher, uh, but I think that there's a lot going against Lele, stuff like Keytron Pharaoh and Melmetal all being in both Nat decks and Sword and Shield tiers. Uh, that check Lele so well, at least in tandems. And typically, a lot of teams, you'll actually see multiple of these. Uh, for example, you it's not entirely unheard of to see Melmetal in tandem with something like a Ferrothorn or a Heatran, or Ferrothorn and Heatran on teams in particular, especially because of the flash fire immunity to Ferrothorn's four times fire weakness. Uh, so I do think that Lele just has a lot of steel competition from OU, but still very good. So Galio, it's the best steel type we've tiered so far and it's just because of how potent this thing is as far as vgc standards go this is an incredible mon with weakness policy variants it's great on trick room it's great on tailwind uh it can't be lowered by intimidate which makes it better in vgc at least than dusk main incredible steel psychic type easy s tier lunala is also gonna get this s tier uh it's one of those mons that, again similarly to the to a lot basically a lot of the other things and i'll actually i'm not gonna tier calyrex now uh but it's just outclassed by calyrex for its typing but if Calyrex was ever to get banned, this would be like a top five Pokemon as far as the Uber steering goes. Uh, it's still able to take advantage of a lot of Ubers though. It's great defensive, go psychic weirdly enough because of Shadow Shield and Boots. It's also got some really good utility options like Will-O-Wisp, Defog, Teleport for momentum. It gets good recovery. It's a decent Pokemon. I'm actually gonna put this right above Solgaleo because of nothing else. Uh, Solgaleo literally is invalidated by Duskmane and even, well, no, I guess it's literally the same argument. I think that realistically though, if Duskman and Calyrex are both to get banned today, uh, like right now, I think that if nothing else, actually no, Solgaleo would be better. Solgaleo gets the S tier because Solgaleo would be necessary for his Zarnaeus check and it would just take over most of the usage. Uh, Lunala there would still have to worry about a Veltal, which is still a top five Pokemon. Uh, Dawnwings though, bottom of S, it is just outclassed by Lunala. It's just a further bridge, but this also is significantly slower uh, and it's the speed tier and ability. They don't really make it work like Dawn Rings and uh, Loot Nolly Can with Chowder Shield. So S tier, but it's still not a bad one. Actually, I'm going to put it above. I'm going to put it above RC Psychic because if nothing else, Dawn Wings at least is kind of good on Trick Room. Uh, Duskmane, though, it's an easy S plus Psychic, literally one of the best mods in the game. Uh, Prism Arbor is amazing on this Pokemon because it actually has a lot of types that it can now start resisting and or at least being neutral to instead of being two times weak to. Uh, for example, this is now with Prism Armor, it can take advantage of weaknesses such as Ground, Fire, Ghost, Dark, and this is literally one of the best Xerneas checks. It's a Xerne it's a Steel Psychic as well that, unlike Solgaleo, gets Stealth Rocks, which is pretty good for it, because the only other viable one of the tier that really gets that is Mega Metagross. Uh, but literally, uh, Duskman and Krozma, the best way to put it is if Duskman and Krozma ever got banned, you would basically need to see stacks of Solgaleo plus Mega Metagross to fill its roles on the same Pokemon. Or obviously, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of oversimplifying. You could do stuff like Ferrothorn to fill the similar roles. But the point being is if you were trying to do it within the same type of mod, you could never actually do it with just one of Mega Metagross or Solgaleo. You would need to do both. Um, but it's literally just those two combined into one Pokemon and it does the jobs very well. Ultra Necrozma gets an S plus tier, but it's because of the fact it can start as Dusk Man Necrozma. It's the only reason it makes it that potent, but it is so fucking good for it. Easy S plus. Dottler, I'm putting it in F, but I tiered it in general because Webs of Violet Body Press is so good for it. And if nothing else, it's better than most of these. It's a niche that it carves out for itself. Uh, Orbeetle, I forget why I put Orbeetle. I think I put it in D last time because of Webs. And I think it's like a competition's a lot higher. I don't really like D tier for it anymore. I'm going to put it right above right below i'm gonna put it right below meow stick to be honest it's still pretty good with webs it's still better than dollar obviously and g max or is just a secondary for this it's cool support with gravity i guess is manual for the max move but not setting terrain for itself also kind of sucks um regardless though they're both kind of shit the whole line's kind of shit webs are nice though uh hatterene gets a solid b tier um, actually, how do I get an A tier? I forgot why I put this on Fairy, but this is actually a really good Psychic, and I think maybe if I did put it in B tier, I kind of underrated it. Uh, this is able to take advantage of teams, at least as far as Spike Moth and any non-restricted metagame goes. It's one of the best Psychics you could pair on Trick Room with Ndidi and just go for complete 
horseshit strategies with G-Max Hatterene. And speaking of, I'm actually gonna put G-Max Hatterene um, in the A tier as well, right above it, because it's able to take advantage of the Psychic Terrain from Max Mindstorm, while also making sure it has an incredible option to not change terrain with G-Max Smite. This was incredibly deliberately planned to be one of the better G-Max Pokemon, because it not only sets its own Psychic Terrain with Max Mindstorm in case indeed he was to die and someone wants to kill it with like a Max Overgrowth, let's say, but on top of that as well, going for Max Smite will not clear the Psychic Terrain, so it can still, outside of G-Max, then once you have a couple more terrain turns going around, go for stuff like expanding force and absolutely destroy teams very clear a tiers um this is still even a kind of viable pokemon as far as sword and shield there you goes albeit it's definitely outclassed by how many other psychic star but it's still an okay enough pokemon of the tier it's like a c tier viability ish give or take um and it's a decent yuyumon too uh it's a decent av sponge magic bounce is really cool cool leftovers trickery mon etc um mr rhyme is just a worse version of galar mime i'm actually gonna put it below the below all these but a screen cleaner is a cool enough ability so we'll give it that uh, and dd and dd gets top of a for female and bottom of a for male just because it's this one does get baton pass which is pretty cool actually um female does not but and this also gets trick room actually um actually i forget which one gets baton pass um um indeed does this one get baton pass yeah okay so it is it is female that gets baton pass but male gets trick room which is actually pretty good for it um psychic train and the fact this does get immunity to psychic is really good for it this is literally one of the best vgc bonds even in a restricted metagame because of how well it pairs with stuff like calyrex magirna etc this is an incredible pokemon very terrifying fucking threat as far as doubles go i cannot wait for next gen with this uh ice horse ice horse gets an easy s tier this is actually going to be our best s tier ice horse uh, s tier psychic in my opinion an incredibly terrifying pokemon ice psychic with trick room is an incredible typing it's one of the, it's two of the best offensive typings put on one pokemon that also is now not able to have berries be ran against it and on top of that as well it's also an incredibly bulky pokemon and typically runs weakness policy with dynamax easy s tier we have calyrex shadow easy s plus tier literally one of the best pokemon in the game this is an incredible pokemon as far as not trick room teams go and even still it's really enough runs trick room for opposing tailwind teams it's just gotten that much of a metagame where trick room and tailwind are that fucking uh, restrictive uh but literally one of the best pokemon it's probably i will say these two are the only two uh psychics that i would probably put above shadow tag goth but i think that ultra necrozma still needs to be in that conversation um, and even then, it's really only Shadow Tag Goth. These two are still definitely worse than the other S pluses, which is why I made a whole separate tier for Shadow Tag. It's such a confusing thing to fucking rank. Uh, anyway, we have two Pokemon left. This is the second worst Psychic type. Terrible fucking typing. It's utility. It's just a bad Celebi. Think of it this way, right? Uh, if we look at Fion, let's say, for example, Fion is just a worse mana feat and it does everything a mana feat does but worse calyrex does that but had the nerve to not even continue firing gimmick of 80 and everything because you give it 100 hp fuck this mana hit it f tier uh finally up weirder uh weirder gets honestly weirder gets a solid d tier um weirder is actually a pretty cool pokemon it's a normal type that now has a neutrality to psychic because of its evolution and it's a psychic type that now has an immunity to ghost because of its normal typing so easily an incredible pokemon as far as defensively the typing works for it uh it's got some really good move pool options even just going off of what stantler already has confirmed for it but yeah let me know what you guys think uh if you guys agree with this tier list let me know down below uh if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more content like it leave a like on the video and subscribe with that said shout out to channel members being josh k ultra player mia and zeke zero your guys support is greatly appreciated and if you want to go the extra mile and become a channel member links down below to that as well as our twitter and discord for free updates and videos with that said i will see you guys later until then peace out guys